Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today we're doing another email Q&A. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is where I sit down and I answer your guys' questions that you send to fishofhex at gmail.com. And of course, all questions will be answered in the order in which they're received. Now, a couple things real quick before we get started. Uh, thanks for all the support on yesterday's video. Yeah, it's a rambling video. You guys know that I put the plus 18. Pretty good indication that I'm going to go off on something and not be really appropriate. But that's what I use those videos for, to simply talk and uh, spill my mind and or spill my guts or whatever whatever terminology you want to use. And um, yeah, I enjoy making those videos and you guys seem to like them. So thanks for the support on that. Also, thank you for all the new members to the uh, Join Community tab here on YouTube. I'm actually really liking this, having some good opportunities to go back and forth. And uh, the last thing I want to say is don't forget that the live stream is on Sunday, this Sunday, and every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come on over and get your questions answered. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so our first question comes from Tony. I have a fish quarantine setup consisting of a 30-gallon tank, heater, Tunzi pump, and PVC pipes. I feed them every other day, not overly feeding them. I have started with six small fish, ras, goby, and blennies. Uh, this is week three into quarantine, and I have lost three in the past two weeks. The first was the was the uh, McCulster, McCulster ras. Um, I found was likely due to high ammonia levels. Then the goby, and today the melanoris ras. I believe that the melanoris got caught in the filter pad, but regardless, it sucks. Any suggestions on where I can improve? I do a 50 to 60% water change every five days. Okay, so um, you have a 30 gallon tank with six fish in quarantine. They are small fish, but again, six fish is a quite a bit to put through quarantine at one time especially uh, in a 30 gallon tank. Now you're, you said that the first fish could have died because of high ammonia. Uh, did you did you end up cycling the tank before you added the fish? Uh, there's a good chance if you didn't and you added six fish at one time, the bio load was obviously too high for the current bacteria if any was in there, regardless if you pulled the water from your main display. And uh, that right there could have been enough to cause the damaging in the gills. And this is something that I've talked about when it comes to acclimating fish when you first get them. Uh, a lot of people say to uh, just take the fish and drip acclimate them in, in the water that they're currently in. And then eventually you'll get the temperature and all that good stuff. And then you can put them in to your tank. But like I said, I talked about this before. When you get fish and they've been in a bag all night, they've been pissing and shitting and doing all their business in that bag. And it hasn't been exposed to oxygen yet. And when uh, that bag is opened up, you expose all that ammonia to oxygen. And at that point, it becomes toxic. And that's when it burns the gills. That's when it causes damage. And yet, the fish might not die the first couple days. It might take a couple weeks before that eventually suffocates and kills the fish. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened since you think the first fish first fish died from the ammonia spike i'm thinking because you had too many in there the ammonia burned the gills within the first few days and then now you're starting to see the negative effects of that uh, throughout the quarantine so my recommendation would be to not put as many fish in there make sure the tank is completely cycled uh, you can add rock to it or you can add a sponge filter with sponge filter is what i prefer and let it cycle and become a good uh, ecosystem to process that waste uh, doing big water changes is not going to solve the problem uh, you can do water changes in ammonia infested the tank all you want it doesn't take much to kill and cause damage cause damage to your fish so i would say uh, make sure the tank is cycled cut down on how many fish you actually quarantine at one time and i would not be doing such big water changes i think a max of 20 percent every two weeks is what i would say would be a good thing because if you do too many water changes you're just defeating the purpose of building up that beneficial bacteria and and making the system efficient and stable so yeah hopefully that answers your question uh, tony and uh, good luck man Okay, our next question comes from Carlos. I just set up a water box 20 uh, gallon three weeks ago and I'm having cycling issues. I use distilled water and I am seeing a DKH of 15.2. Now, wow, uh, I know that's high. How should I start lowering it? My parameters are following down calcium, uh, 409, phosphates, ultra low, 0 0.19, phosphorus, 582 parts per billion, uh, temperature, 77.5, pH, uh, 7.61, uh, but it goes high up to 8. One, okay. I do have an apex. Nitrates are at 0. Ammonia is at 1 point on ppm. Okay. Um, so right off the bat, the tank is not cycled. If you're seeing ammonia, the tank isn't cycled. So I wouldn't even look at any other water parameters until the tank is cycled. Now, the fact that your DKH is pretty high either means... You've got a bad batch of salt. You didn't say what salt you were using or your testing method is flawed. Either you're just your test kit's too old or you're just doing it wrong or you don't have something, a reliable test kit in the first place. So I would, I recommend when you're testing elk to use the um, Hannah checker. That seems to be pretty, uh, 
pretty appropriate and actually gives you an accurate reading relatively quickly. And um, so I would I would test that first because 15.2 is really high unless you got a bad, bad batch of salt. Now, um, other than that, I would continue to cycle that tank. Don't put any fish in it. Don't put anything in it. Just let it cycle. Um, I don't really see how old this, this uh, email is. I actually just copied and pasted it over. But hopefully... You cycle the tank uh, all the way through before adding any fish or any kind of livestock. So, uh, yeah, I think that your testing method might be flawed, and I wouldn't even try to bring it down. The only way you're going to bring down a DKH in a tank is if it naturally gets removed um, through the coral growth and consumption, or you kind of just do a lot of water changes with really low alkalinity and uh, can compensate for it. But it would have to be an alkalinity that's like 7 uh, and you just have to do a ton of water changes because it's not going to drop that quickly, even with removing that, that difference. So... Yeah, uh, as I said, check your uh, testing method, and you could always get back to me because you are a member on the um, on the channel, so let me know what you figure out, all right? Okay, our next question comes from Joshua. i seen in your video a few years back regarding black spot disease. I believe my goldfish has this, and I'm trying to treat him. Originally, I thought it was a parasite, so I treated the tank with general cure, but the spots have not gone away. Hope to find a cure before it's too late. Just wondering if how the treatment went so I know if I should try it or if you have any other information that would be helpful. Now, when it comes to black spot disease, it's actually a worm or technically a parasite. I think it's Turbellia or Tabellaria, something like that. I don't, at top of my head, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Could be wrong. If anybody can find a link or whatever, put it in the uh, comment section. But uh, anyways, it is a worm. And the best way to treat this is to kind of go about it the same way you would go about treating ick in your uh, main display. So what you should do is remove all the fish that are infected. If you've got the one fish that has it, then consider all the other fish in the tank uh, have it. They're either hosting it or they're showing signs. And uh, you want to remove all the fish. You want to put them in quarantine. You can treat with Prazipro. I would prefer copper. Uh, do a copper treatment for two weeks and then a, do a two week of Prazipro just in case. And even a two week observation after that, you're going to have plenty of time and you'll find out here in a second. Now, once you get the fish in quarantine, you're starting the treatment, you're going to want to let the tank go fallow for 10 weeks. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because there is a life cycle for this uh, parasite, and it needs to die off. It, it Once it doesn't have a host, it will eventually starve to death, just like the ick parasite. So you got a long road ahead of you, and the reason why it keeps popping up is because you didn't cure the tank. Um, you can put all the medicine in the world. In that tank, it's not going to go away. So I would recommend that you uh, pull it out, pull the fish out, take care of the fish and go fallow and uh, it should take care of the issue relatively quickly. Well, 10 weeks quickly. All right, so good luck. Okay, next question is from Alex. I have two AI Prime HDs over my 20 gallon drop off all in one display tank. I under underestimated how powerful they were and have evidently uh, vaporized almost all coralline on my cedar rock and almost bleached several other uh, acclimating corals. The lights were about 50% at the time using AB+. I, my encrusting Monty didn't show any color until I got them below 10%. Everything else uh, looks okay, but the Montes are still faded and the polyps hardly, hardly out and my dragon soul favia is still pretty brown but just starting getting some of the purple back after uh putting it even lower in the tank um i burnt my new corals uh with with having lights too high i've seen i it's been uh, about three months since this happened or this event happened and the colors are still either faded or pretty brown water parameters are pretty damn good having 60 percent weekly water changes uh not sterile dosing dosing nitrates and phosphates and have been uh, that way for months. Uh, haven't tried feeding any aminos, acids, or additives. Should I try additives, or are they simply uh, still need more time to recover from the overexposure? Okay, so one thing about corals is when you overexpose them, or you bleach them, or you or you fade the colors either with high nutrients, or sorry, with low nutrients, or you darken them with high nutrients, it takes time to recover. And that's why I've been trying to give this fish of hex millie time to recover. But there are just more factors involved, and it's obviously not recovering. But back to your situation, it just takes time. It's been three months. You should start seeing improved coloration at this point. Um, I'm surprised with a tank, you know, 20-gallon, one of the, or, well, you have two of those lights, so that is a significant amount of light, even at 50%. So I'm surprised you didn't lose them altogether. Now, what I would recommend is uh, getting them in that 250 to 300 par range. If you don't really have an op ability to test that, I would rent either the meter from BRS or even buy the Senai Reef to give you a general idea. Get around the good range because even if you go too low and light trying to compensate for the fact that they got kind of bleached out, you could still cause damage because they're not getting enough light to produce produce energy via the zoos and thales. So 
I would recommend uh, definitely figuring out where your par is and keep them in that 250 to 3, and the chalices can go down a little bit lower, but I mean, they seem to be fine around that range. And uh, I would just give it more time. Now, when it comes to dosing extra things, I am a big believer in refuel. I use Acropower, and of course, I keep my iodine in check as well as my um, potassium. So those are what I dose on a 300. And uh, yeah, so that's what I recommend you do, and just give it time. But again, make sure you are in the correct par range because even too little light can cause some damage so good luck with that okay our next question is from mitch and this is regarding vermented snails uh, can i scrape them off these two hammers and here's the picture and the answer is yes you can but i have questions for you mitch where did you get the hammer from did you get it from your display tank and they just seem to be on there or did you get it from a buddy and you got to scrape them off now uh, the rule of thumb is is and i've i've talked about this before the only reason why i got vermented snails in my current display was because of that giant lobo at the bottom of the tank now granted that lobo was in quarantine i still missed them so before i put that lobo in quarantine i scraped off those those uh fermented snails i i really did i did the best that i ability i scraped them off but yet i still found them on the lobo later on in the display tank after introducing it and the reason why I know it came from that Lobo is because they weren't anywhere else in the tank. They simply started on that tank that came in with it. And there was nothing that I've introduced coral wise that could have even possibly brought them in. So, yeah, with that said, when it comes to introducing corals, they won't come in on the actual coral unless it's an LPS like you have now. When you have that skeletal structure, uh, like I said, Lobos. Uh, hammer corals, torches, stuff like that. When they have that skeleton that's exposed, that's where they'll grow on. They won't actually live on the flesh of SPS. They won't live on even the flesh of the hammers and stuff like that. They won't. They they don't like that stuff. That's not going to give them a good solid base to attach to. So, the rule of thumb is if you're if that thing already has vermintus snails on it and you don't have them in your main display, that coral should either be ixnade and not putting it in your tank even after removing them, or put that coral in t in quarantine for three months and i'm extending my any lps that i ever put into any future displays will spend three to six months in quarantine hands down not taking any chances because that's how they come in especially on lps um even scraping them off does not mean they're not going to be there uh, i found out the hard way and uh you know thankfully it's not an issue for for me long term because my sps don't really deal with them they, there's not a problem but uh, they can become a huge issue for those of you who have soft coral tanks and LPS tanks. They can just, the streamers can be a real mess. So I know this is a long answer, but you need to either not put that in there or quarantine that coral and any other LPS that might even show any signs of fermented snails on them. And that goes for anybody. So good luck, man. Next question is from Chad. Hey man, what does it look like to you? I do quarantine. This is my only problem, and here's a picture of it. So it is actually a, a bleached out portions of an a uh, acropora. Now it's hard to tell, man, Chad. I need more information. Uh, looks like it's kind of burnt. Uh, I don't know what your lighting is, Chad. I, if you hear this, I know I emailed you and said that this was going to be on today's video. You need to email me back and say, hey, man, what's your? I need your water parameters. I need to know what kind of lights you have. Your general par where that coral is. Um, I don't see, I need probably a better picture of the base. Um, it doesn't look like Acroporidian flatworms because they would have started from the base and worked themselves up. They wouldn't have gone to the tips. It just looks like some STN or slow tissue necrosis, which could be due to many things. Fluctuations in alkalinity is a big cause of it. Too much light, not enough nutrients, uh, getting its ass kicked by another coral. I've noticed that even if it gets attacked from the bottom from another coral, the tips will still STN out. Uh, it just happened. So, uh, Chad, give me some more information and I will be happy to help you out. Okay. Our next question and our last question comes from Jackson. I saw your YouTube channel teaching about how to battle dinos in a reef tank. I'm currently battling dinos too. I have been overdosing Zeobac for quite a period of time, and I'm not sure if that's the cause of my dino outbreak. Now I'm doing the raising NO3 PO4 plus heavily filter plus wet skimming plus stop feeding trace elements and coral foods. Uh, I also stopped dosing all kinds of bacteria at the moment. Can I know if this is the correct, if it's correct to stop dosing bacteria? Thank you so much for creating a lot of the useful information videos for reefers around the world. Hey, no problem, Jackson. Now, um, before I get started, I want to let you guys know that I am developing something that's going to make uh, identifying and battling dino easier. It's something that um, kind of came to mind the other day, and it's uh, it's in the works. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully, I'll have it ready within the month or so. Now, when it comes to your particular situation, uh, Jackson, it, it seems like you're you're ba you're doing different methods that are c conflicting with each other. So. Uh, raising the nutrients is definitely a good thing. Uh, stopping the bacteria is definitely a good thing. I don't know why you're dosing that in the first place. Are you running Zeovit? 
because if you're running Zeobit, that's probably why you have fucking Dino anyways. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a later video. So when it comes to uh, raising the new, the NL3 and the PO4, you're doing a good job. Now, I don't know why you're heavily filter plus wet skimming. Now, if you heavily filter your tank or you wet skim, that just removes the nutrients that you're adding you're adding to the tank. So you're adding the NO3 and the PO4, okay? So that that's going to be good for the tank. You want to get the nutrients up. The last thing you want to do is wet skim, which then potentially brings your nutrients down and heavily filter. I'm not sure what you mean by that if you have a separate filtration system. But either way, the last thing you want to do is remove more nutrients while you're trying to add some. That's just not going to work out. Now, of course, stopping the trace elements is a good idea. I recommend anybody who's do, do, uh, feeding coral or um, adding trace elements, if you start getting dino, you need to stop doing those um, just, for, just for a little while. Now your goal for battling dino is pretty simple. You there are there are three main strands of dino within our hobby, but yet there's two thousand of them in the ocean. And the thing is that two of the three strands are kind of treated the same way. The third one, uh, again, I'll do a separate video on, is something you got to take a different approach. And the only way you can identify these strands is to see them underneath a microscope. And um, for your situation. What you want to do is increase the nutrients the way you have been. You want to stay at uh, 3 to 5 ppm of nitrates and then 0 0.07 to 0 0.15 of phosphates. Keep it there and stable on a daily basis and then up to weekly basis. Your goal is to be in that range all the time. Now, on top of that, you should be manually removing um, the... Um, Dino, okay, you can scrape it off with a toothbrush, then siphon it out. One thing I recommend people do, and I did this, is... <clears throat> excuse me is to go ahead and take a filter sock, put it in your sump, keep the tank running, but yet siphon all of your um, dyno into that filter sock, but yet keep the tank running so you, so you don't have to turn it off, you don't have to worry about temperature or anything like that. Just keep working at the dyno and manually removing it. Now, on top of that, you can add a UV sterilizer, and you can also add uh, more macroalgae to your refugium. It's always good to have a competing source. Now, the thing with dyno is it thrives in a low-nutrient environment when nothing else can outcompete it for those nutrients. So... That is an issue that we're running into in this hobby, and I'm trying. To, I'm not going to go off on it because we don't have much time. But um, with the instant gratification successful right away and having a tank full of coral, on top of using methods like Zeovid, those things together can really uh, lead us to where we are now, with a lot of people getting dino, uh, mostly leaning towards the instant gratification and people people's inability to wait for the tank to cycle and to add fish slowly and to build up that bacteria and to build up a stable reef ecosystem before um, going ham on corals and stuff like that so um, again i'm going to save that for a later video because it's going to be a long one anyway uh so good increase your nutrients re manual removal add a uv sterilizer if you can and uh stop with the bacteria altogether forever you never need that shit and um stop with the trace elements and you should be good keep be consistent that's the thing with dinos you got to get in there every day uh, you don't take a break unless you want it to take over and then over time the nutrients will increase and then with the nutrients increasing increasing within your system is going to add to the biodiversity you're gonna these other organisms are going to outcompete the dino and then it will eventually nix itself okay so let nature do its thing you just got to give it a little bit of bump in the right direction so guys that's about it for the video i'm gonna burp and that's two videos in a row i'm sorry i'm sorry this shit happens but uh that's it for the video guys i am going to let you go because i gotta build make remake my youtube ad that's about a year old and my tank looks like shit in it so i gotta redo that and of course, uh, the lights are going to be in today. Got to take a trip to Home Depot. I got ta a customer's tank this afternoon. I got a lot of stuff going on. So I will see you guys uh, Sunday for the uh, live stream Q&A. Again, that's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And I'll see you guys later. All right, peace. Later. All right, peace.